Essentially, my work is about the fragmentation of space and memory. An example of this is if you walk through a city or have a conversation with someone, you'll remember that experience in fragments, but we'll still have a feeling of completeness. That idea is the foundation for most of my work. I'm also interested in how we translate the present through our past. I think about multiple different events happening at the same time, um, related or unrelated and how to some degree we can construct and shape and, construct and shape our individual worlds uh, but what we choose to remember, the objects that we surround ourselves with and the paths that we decide to take. Now this body of work evolved from my show that I had here in 2009 that was titled Harvest. Uh, that show focused on the idea of rural America. Um, I was raised on a farm um, near a small town with a population of about 700 people in, in uh, rural Minnesota. And over the last 10 years or so, the images and um, ideas about growing up in Minnesota would kind of creep up in my work, and at first I resisted exploring them, thinking they were coming from a place of nostalgia. Uh, but I finally decided to explore that idea, and what happened was is that the idea of rural America shifted from being the focus to being the platform or stage for my work. So essentially what I did with this body of work is I invented a small town that I like to call Nowhere, which is from the phrase in the middle of nowhere. And each painting's meant to be a snapshot into the world of its inhabitants. So this painting, Threat, started more Threat. And what I was thinking of is objects and things that can benefit him who possibly could be a threat to the child. And I was also thinking about how the child could eventually become the threat. So of course, the dog, think about that. Um, the desserts and cookies, I was thinking about childhood obesity and diabetes and issues with um, nutrition, childhood nutrition. A little, I like to actually have little um, things that you discover in the paintings, a little bear here, uh, which refers to the kind of bear market that we're currently in, the mm -hmm. economy. Um, vitamins and uh, uh, medication, uh, which can be vital to a, um, someone's survival, but also in, used incorrectly can cause a lot of damage as well. This piece here, which is called Search for Value, is also about someone who's kind of lost in their own little world. This is a kind of a, a um, I would say, a, a, an image of a, a narcissist. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's constantly looking for uh, her self-value by overanalyzing herself. It's actually this little image here, if anyone wants to come closer. This here is actually this entire image that she's uh, analyzing and looking at. And she's su uh, surrounded by objects that are used to um, document and to analyze. So you've got all these uh, magnifying glasses and cameras. There's also a, a, a scale here with some green grass, which refers to that whole phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> the, the, Window is actually also empty. There's nothing beyond that because she can't see past her own world or her own search. Uh, there's also a little duck decoy in the bottom here, which to me symbolizes that this um, search for self-value is actually a decoy from her actually living her own life. And I actually began making collages when I was in the in first year of graduate school. I was taking a drawing class under Robert Warren. And I was making drawings with graphite material, pencil and graphite crayons and things like that, black and white drawings. So he decided to um, look at the drawings and ask me to take the drawings to another dimension. So he su suggested that I just tear some of the drawings up, cut some of the drawings up, and glue those pieces down and come up with something new. So I experimented with that and came up with, with some um, collages based on pencils and uh, gra graphite materials. And then later he suggested that I look at some artworks by Roman Robertin and perhaps combine, look for other materials to, com to combine with the, with the piece of uh, drawings. So I started looking at photographs and piece of colored papers and I would paint some of the pieces of papers and I would cut those materials up and glue down and that began my 
uh, journey into making collages. I started making these collages in Liberia um, at night after venturing all over Liberia with the group that I, I was with. We was, I was with a group of about 19 individuals from uh, Southern University and also from businesses, business owners in Baton Rouge, and also a minister. By improvising, that is making the images up as I paint. And these titles came after I finished the works. I looked into the works and saw some influences from night, from our Liberia. I just named, gave the works these different titles, like um, Liberian Dreams. One of these works is called, some are untitled. Um, <coughs> this work is called Street Corners. I found it very interesting to stand on street corners and look, look out at the people there. And, I mean, thousands of people are hanging out on street corners. Selling them, um, selling their goods, or making, um, weaving, um, making um, fabric, like that, sewing. Um, it's just interesting on a street corner in Liberia. That place you can look up and see people working, and everyone there is working. So this work is called Street Corners. I try to capture in an abstract way the excitement on street corners in uh, Liberia. Another work I call Liberian Dream, Liberian Dreams. This work. Looking at the different uh, faces in Liberia of different, uh, many of the people there who seem to have lots of dreams. They want to dream about getting out of Liberia and going somewhere else and um, just making it as individuals. Some works are left untitled and another works, the face says it. That's called the face says it and I would look at the faces on some of these people in Liberia. I kind of read into that psyche. It's something like you look at a, a face of a person and the face says it all. And I think a lot of what is in my work comes from having grown up here with this kind of rich history of storytelling and myth and, you know, the, the landscape here, all of that's part of my work. For some time now, I've done pieces that investigate our disconnection from the natural world and our connections to it and specifically focusing on animals. And I will take imagery with animals in it from children's storybooks and science books and television shows about nature and animals to paintings with animals in them, etc., etc. And I pull different sources and kind of conjure these imagined images, but reflecting on that we have animals as pets, we start sleeping in with them as ch children, little stuffed animals, um, we're told stories about life through them in our storybooks as children, and we cause their extinction and we eat them, and so just thinking about all those things but then conjuring what really become these imagined images. And for this group of work, this show I'm calling Wolf Tales, because most of the work um, my work is on these three walls, but I'll talk about these first, are from a body of work where I was focusing on the wolf. Um, but specifically looking at wolves and their wild nature, and then how they're feared, and um, they're a big part of fairy tales, and thought of as these creatures that are really terrifying, but they're maternal and they care for their young, and they're live in packs, they're very social, and so just thinking about all those different ideas and how they're being forced out of their habitats all the time, and you hear stories in, around LA, for example, where they come and attack people because you know they don't have anywhere to live, and so kind of reflecting on all of those things. Um, these are all painted on canvas, and you can see that I've stitched a lot of them together, and I've been doing that for some time, referencing traditional women's work. This piece kind of, it's called The Woman and the Wolf, and actually the show that I had in Houston was called The Woman and the Wolf, and I kind of think of it as the title piece for the show. Um, that this image is from like movie, and it's splitting into this different kind of reality. So one reason that I paint these patterns, again referencing the um, fabrics, but also to create a very unreal space. Um, but I saw places where you like peek into another rat reality, some things that are painted in a more dimensional, real way, some things that are painted a little more flat or stylized. So playing around with the idea of space and different types of styles in one piece. Um, in these paintings, I think I use myself for all of them as the model, but um, I often use, I, I always use people that I know to model for me. And it's interesting hearing what Diane says because I, 
I use them to model for me, but they're clearly characters in the work. And so these aren't meant to be me at all, but I just use myself partly because I was really thinking about this relationship between the woman and the wolf and the woman and her wild nature that is sometimes um, constricted by our culture and also those maternal aspects of the wolf. Me, I was born in Houma, Louisiana uh, in the 60s. I uh, grew up uh, raising hogs and watching cartoons um, <laughs> and uh, developing a whole series of different uh, comic book characters and different narratives uh, throughout uh, my childhood and on and on. Um, uh, when I began uh, LSU, well, my, my mother also paints, um, and she always continually to this day questions what it is that I do, or the validity of what it is that I do, um, because uh, she does kind of traditional uh, southern landscape paintings. Um, and so uh, that, that question of what it was that I was doing, especially throughout undergraduate school, where I did very traditional kind of works uh, early on, um, and always made really neat stuff in my sketchbooks. Uh, and it's taken me years and years and years to finally give myself permission uh, to make the really neat stuff my artwork. Generally, the subject matters that I begin off with, almost all the pieces are, are toys from my childhood. Uh, and that allows generally for a really, a really into the piece um, and allows for a really kind of playful approach uh, that doesn't get uh, since kind of too dense too fast. Um, these pieces back behind here uh, were all intended to be studies, um, just really uh, textual studies and process studies um, on, uh, on different techniques of actually physically applying paint uh, from uh, some printing kind of techniques, uh, to others palette knives, to others really haphazard uh, kind of techniques. And uh, I've always kind of dealt with uh, in, in teaching uh, design classes in a very simple color relativity uh, project, you know, that notion of color relativity, and I deal with that as I'm working uh, within my work. Uh, and so decided to kind of finish these out with an image that I've used for the last three years, uh, the, the Doughboy. Um, with an idea of a uh, color relativity study, but with, the, with them being singular. Uh, so the title of these are uh, uh, No Relativity with Singularity, uh, because there's only one thing to compare it with in each that, piece. That notion of pop art has always been, uh, you know, I've been drawn to it. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely a, a dramatic influence. Um, to turn it into kind of pop, where I'm taking stuff from something purely from popular culture right now that's about culture and not about uh, kind of me filtering the information. It makes more sense for me to use those toys and things from that are mine that, that, have a, a, that I have a deep kind of connection with uh, in rather than just kind of randomly grab here's this and that uh, for, you know, uh, and, and you know, and that's it's kind of interesting because people then, you know, they come and say, "Oh, it's the, it's the doughboy," and it's like, "Well, it's not the doughboy. It's the doll of doughboy that I've had for, you know, x many number of years. That's the actual image. It's not the doughboy image, if that makes." Sense.